what if we base the knowledge of biology on a single visit to the zoo? That's really where we have been in microbiology in the past years. The question of where we come from is, is, is a question that has kept people awake for uh, a long time. In my lab nowadays, we really can start approaching this question from a completely different perspective. So where do we come from? Uh, maybe we derive from some, some sort of microbes that, that thrive somewhere on the ocean floor. Wouldn't that be exciting to know? We study the diversity of life on our planet, and the majority of life is really of the microbial type, like these small, tiny cells that are really everywhere on our planet. And of course, we can only look at those organisms that exist today. For microorganisms, for instance, there are no fossil records. So in order to study those, we collect samples from all over the world. And these can be from, for instance, from extreme environments, such as Yellowstone National Park, from hot springs, from ocean floor sediments, from permafrost, from all over the world, essentially. So what we do is, by looking at, the, by studying the organisms that we have today, we try, by, by looking at their gen genomes, trying to reconstruct what might have happened in the tree of life, so how they have evolved, so to say. And what we know today is that there is a couple of distinct life forms or major branches in the tree. What we do not know exactly is how those are connected. And in my research, we try to see how these deep branches in the tree of life, how they come together. These samples, so that's here, this is a, a sample from a, a hydrothermal spring, uh, let's say a volcano at the, at the bottom of the ocean. These are being processed in our lab. So we extract DNA or we extract cells and we try to study those at a genetic level. We try to determine the DNA sequence or the genome sequence of those samples. And this is really a revolution because previously this has never been possible. Previously it was quite tedious to sequence an organism and we need to first grow it in the lab and then wait, extract DNA and so on. And it was a, a project that would take several years for a single organism. Nowadays, we don't have to culture these organisms in the lab. We can go straight from a single cell to a genome and we can do that in large numbers. So this is really exciting, of course. So now we're at uh, the sequencing facility and here you see a number of uh, very expensive machines that sequence all the organisms that we have analyzed in the lab. Uh, and we generate large amounts, really, really large amounts of sequence data. We try to reconstruct the genomes of all the organisms that, that thrive in all these samples. And uh, then later on we, we compare those with one another in order to reconstruct the tree of life. So all these new organisms that we identify, we try to place those in the tree of life and see how they are connected to life that we already know. And sometimes we also find completely new branches in the tree of life. There, there's a lot of excitement going on in the lab. With, with all the new microbes that are being discovered uh, at, at a staggering rate, that almost on a daily basis we find something that is interesting. Uh, whether it be a completely new lineage, or maybe something that is a, a missing link, sometimes completely new viruses that have never been seen before. And this is something that is extremely fascinating, I think. I, I can't really predict where we will be in a couple of years, but I think that there's a lot of material out there that will make us revise the biology textbooks.